Kevin, is that the easiest money that you've ever... <laughs> How many takes, Kevin? Yeah. How many takes for that? <laughs> I want more lines. <laughs> All right, we're going to stay in the animation world and jump ahead to 1999. <laughs> Batman Beyond appears in another iteration that I think just defied everybody and, and challenged everybody's conceptions. And I'm, I'm curious, Bruce, where did that, do you remember how, where this idea came from and where the conception came uh, from? I can tell you exactly. We were uh, meeting with um, Jamie Kellner, who was the, the president of um, the Warner Brothers Network at the time. And uh, we had just started doing the, what we call the revamp Batman episodes. It was the, the New Adventures of Batman. And um, we were really into that. And uh, Jamie had this, this, he called us in for a meeting. It was actually in Sam's new office. It was Jamie Kilner's old office, like literally 20 feet from where I have my office is now. And uh, he was like very complimentary on the new show. He really liked it a lot. He said, but you know, we kind of want to do something a little different with Batman. And I went, uh-huh. And he said, yeah, I'm thinking teenage Batman. And I just kind of went, holy crap, really? <laughs> You know, um, it was uh, pretty scary. It was just kind of like, uh, probably the same feeling that a lot of people had when they first heard that we were doing it. It was just like, oh my God, that's just going to be horrible. Um, but, uh, yeah, and I think also the time, I think Buffy was like the, 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 the WB's huge, huge breakout hit at the time. So I think he was trying to like kind of grab a little bit of Buffy and kind of Buffy eyes Batman. <laughs> so it, at first it was just kind of like, guys, I, I don't even want to do this. It's, it's going to be horrible. It's like, wow, I just, you know, I don't know. Um, but then I was out in the parking lot uh, talking with uh, Paul Dini after the meeting. And I... I said, yeah, yeah, it's just, I don't know, this just seems so commercial and so, so not, what we will, what, not what we do. And then I said, but you know, if Bruce Wayne got really, really old and he couldn't be Batman anymore, so this takes place in the future, and then he has to bring in like this, this kid to be the new Batman. So it's almost like, you know, you know, like the passing the torch, you know, the, the old warrior passing the torch onto the, the, the new guy and, you know, teaching him all his tricks. I thought, yeah, you know, that might be something. And then the more we started talking about it, 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 it just kind of, you know, grew. And then I mentioned it to Glenn Mary Kami, who was one of my co-producers on Batman Beyond, or on, on Batman, and um, I mentioned him to the, mentioned the idea to him, and the minute I said, it's futuristic Batman, he said, that sounds great, let's do it. And so at that point, it was just kind of like, okay, yeah, I guess this maybe, maybe it won't suck. So, um, but it was pretty funny at the time. I remember lead, when, leading up to the premiere, everybody was convinced it was just gonna be just a travesty. And uh, it, this is like in the early days of the internet. I remember, you know, read, actually reading message board comments. People were like, wow, this is like so much better than I thought it, it, would, it could, ever could be. So it was like, you know, cool, good on us. <laughs> Lots changed about message boards since then, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, people actually were a little bit polite back then. So, so does that mean, Kevin, that you get the call going, can you do an old Bruce Wayne voice? Do you have to practice an old voice? They wanted me to do a really old Bruce Wayne. <laughs> I had to get him real proud. <laughs> so again, as part of Batman 75, we have another clip, and Peter, maybe you can talk about this one for a moment. Yeah, I mean, once we decided to do the, calling the earliest animated kind of version of Batman that we had done with Bruce, of course, the next thing that Bruce and I talked about was, well, we should do a new Batman Beyond short. Sure to go with the early first Strange Days Batman. <laughs> so, called Darwin, Cook, Bruce did. Bruce and Darwin got back together. It's like getting the old band back together. And uh, they came up with a great take. And I think you're gonna see it now. <laughs> Mr. Wayne! Terry, you're hurt. Just groggy. Who did this? It was me.
Who said that thing? It didn't say. Whoever it was. They didn't stop at one. Seven against two. Pretty bad odds. And DC Comics publishes Batman Hush by Jeff Loeb, drawn by Jim Lee. <laughs> and this was a big momentous moment. This is a momentous moment. This is a big moment for the comic book business, for all the creators involved. And I'm just curious, again, you know, since we have the perspective of time here, what, what did you understand what was going on when you and Jeff were creating this? Did you have any idea how transformative this was going to be? Um, no, not really. I mean, we just, you know, I've been at DC for um, three years already and really hadn't done any monthly work, and I felt it was time to do something, and uh, we knew that um, uh, there would be concern with the schedule, so I ended up doing a lot of these issues in secret. I think only three people at DC knew that I was actually even working on this book, and I just, I just said to, you know, Jeff called me up and said, look, we, want to do, we should do a Batman story. That's the character that uh, is most popular at DC. That's how you'll make your mark. And he said, like, what character, what villain do you want to use? And I, and I remember saying, uh, well, I, I kind of like all of them. Thinking he was just going to pick one, that movie, just like Batman versus the Joker, whoever. And uh, maybe he misunderstood me, maybe he's just uh, sadistic. But he basically crafted a story, was a new villain every single issue. And uh, it was just a great way, and, you know, it's interesting, from that last video we saw, which incorporated all the different elements of Batman, we wanted to really do a story that actually did tie into a lot of stuff that that you had seen before in different decades of, of, of Batman mythology. So to that point, he kind of starts out looking like Frank Miller's Batman with the shorter ears, and then with each successive issue, he kind of transforms more into a lighter, more acrobatic Neil Adams Batman, and then uh, there's like a shot with all the Batmobiles, and I try to incorporate the ones from the, t the cartoon, the TV shows. And I think at the time, we didn't have the rights to do the 66 Batmobile, but I put it in there anyway. Uh, <laughs> So if you see it, there's like the mortars I think are missing and some like little tweaks just to kind of fudge it a little bit, but that was, a, I had good reference, I knew what I was doing, so don't blame me. Uh, but at the end of the day, it was just a, a, you know, I think that book really introduced me to the fanaticism of Batman fans. You guys are comic book fans, you guys are Batman fans. When you get into comics as a professional, you, you see the, the loyalty and the passion of the fans, but then when you do a Batman project, it goes to a whole different secret, like, uber level, and people, there's fanaticism at that level, and uh, it really opened my eyes to the power of this mythology, of this character, and uh, it's, it's a character that, uh, you know, I really love working on and look forward to doing more of. <laughs> That's funny, Jim. The part of that story that I haven't really heard before that just boggles me is that you were able to work on the book in secret. I find it unfathomable yes, it would. that yes, even uh, yes. 12 years later that we could even contemplate that yes. such a thing would happen. I don't think that would be possible. I think I did like nine issues in secret before we finally solicited it, and we were almost late on that final three issues just to show you how slowly it worked. But uh, it was cool. I actually made a bet with the editor at the time, Mark Carlin, that I, uh, Mike Carlin, that I would make the, the uh, deadline, and I, I still, I, I beat, you know, I beat him in the bet, and uh, it was for a hundred bucks, and I still have that check signed. Uh, on my uh, above my drafting table, so it's a motivator. So, to, to me, another watershed year comes in 2005 when you and Frank Miller begin working on All Star Batman and Robin, which is going to be coming out in an oversized absolute edition this summer. Right. Uh, what perfect timing, of course, for Batman 75. Uh, this was right as I started working at DC, and I would call this a fairly tumultuous production. Yeah. Uh, when it came out, it was actually, uh, a lot of people didn't like it uh, on the internet. Um, they were like, that's not my Batman. And, and uh, I would say at least two different people at DC almost got fired over this book. There was an issue which had blacked out bars. I don't know if you guys are familiar. There's like a lot of 
uh, salty language in the black bars, but the printer made an error and you can actually see the, the words underneath the black bars for some reason. They decided that it was important to have the real words underneath the black bar instead of just putting a black bar. So those are collector's issues. I, I saw one about every week on eBay, so if you look for the auction, you can find it. Um, but uh, yeah, so, uh, but what's funny, and I think it's real proof and testament to the power of Batman, is that as crazy as, as that storyline was, and the quote, I'm the goddamn Batman, it is now part of the vernacular, it is now part of the mythology, and it really shows you, for as human as the character is, he is bulletproof in all these different ways that you can tell a crazy story where he's zebra Batman and he goes to the moon in the 50s, and you can do a story where he's very dark in, in the Arkham games and uh, in the Dark Knight movie, and, um, and it still works, and he's multi-generational and appeals to little kids and older fans, and it's... It just goes to show you that all this stuff basically goes into a giant creative pool and you guys as the fans decide what's important, what works, and you're, you are in that way shaping who Batman becomes. Christopher Nolan launched his global phenomenon that is the Batman trilogy. This is me personally. I think these are the apotheosis of superhero movies. I think these movies are actual art made from a story about a guy wearing a mask. Um, and, and yet still work as amazing, thrilling movies for me. And, and, and I'm just curious for everyone on the group or whoever wants to answer it. How do you think, that, that's, that's again, it's another seismic reinter reinterpretation of the character. But today we've covered so many of them. And I'm just curious, where do you, where do you think it goes next? Where do you, where do you think the, the Batman storytelling goes? We've worked our way through humor and fantasy all the way to almost a realistic version. That's what I loved about Batman Begins when I saw it. I thought, this is the first superhero movie I thought, well, this could actually happen. That this seems real to me, that this guy could do this, and this doesn't seem to be out of place in the real world. Do right. you think it's going to go back to a more fantastic I'm just Nobody right. knows the answer, so feel free. No, the technology has definitely caught up with the mythology. You can now have a car, or you can now have a phone in your car, as <laughs> was portended in the Batman 66 car, uh, TV show. So. Um, I don't know. To me, I think there's going to be a, a broadening of the Batman family. You're going to see a more diversification of that, and I think the technology is going to basically make all his toys even cooler as before in time. But it's also the humanity of the character, I think, that's made him so resonant for so long. You know, he's, 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 he's mortal. He doesn't have any superpowers. And he's got such an incredible moral compass. He always does the right thing. Um, that's what's made him last so many you know, one thing that's interesting is that I think all of this stuff is cyclical. If you go back, you know, Batman started off really dark, then he got really silly with Adam West, then he got gradually darker and darker through the Neil Adams years, and through Frank Miller, and then the, the Tim Burton thing in my show, and, and then it kind of, it kind of, it ebbs and flows. Um, the James Bond movies did this too. I mean, they've, they've gone through periods where they were like really, really silly, like they hit their, 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 their peak of silliness at, at Moonraker, and at that point the producers realized, oh, you know, we can't really keep going this way, we have to go back and make the next movie simple and kind of work our way through it that way. So, um, same thing happened at Warner Brothers in animation. Uh, this is about ten years ago now, I guess, when um, they, they finished the, the, the Batman, the Matsuda Batman show, and I was meeting with uh, our, our boss, Sam Register, and he said, he was, what, what do you think we should do next with Batman? Just, just picking my brain. And I said, well, I think you've kind of, you know, we've, we've kind of done like this dark, serious Batman for like, you know, 10, 15 years now. I think we need to go back the opposite way and kind of going back and, and, and embrace the, the, the childlike, you know, aspects of the character that, that people liked when they were really, really little. So that's how they ended up doing, you know, Batman Brave and the Bold, which I think is just as valid a show. So I'm really curious to see what they're going to do with the movies now. I mean, it's like, I'm actually really looking forward to seeing Ben Affleck play Batman, because I think it's going to be a yeah! whole different take on the character. And as we found, is when you team him up with Superman, it's a whole different world. It's like, it's not suddenly the world that's like all, all bound by, you know, supposed, you know, hard science and physics. It's like, you know, that's, you open up the door, you know, it's the willy-nilly box. You can end up, you know, going to the moon if you want. So, we'll see. So we end here in the present day. We have the current iteration of Batman. Chris Rand, for anyone that's wondering, Batman Strength is a comic book character. This is the number one monthly comic book in America. It has been since it launched almost three years ago. Every collected edition becomes a number one New York Times bestseller in hardcover and in paperback. Uh, he's never probably ever been stronger, uh, critically, <coughs> commercially, in comic form. And 
Then we have a new area of Batman is, oh, I forgot, my moment of shameless plug. Coming this fall, uh, we will be putting out uh, a book and mass set uh, based on the third volume in their trilogy, and you can kind of see it in the product shot. It is one of the creepiest, weirdest products you will ever see for sale in a retail environment. It's an actual Joker mask <coughs> mirroring his shaved off face that you can put on and wear and do God knows what. <laughs> Just make the product, we don't tell you what to do with it. Um, so we have that, and then the newest world that Batman has come in. A massively popular series of Arkham Asylum games, the third version of which is due shortly. And perhaps the best place to end this is the last, most recent iteration we have seen of Batman. <laughs> take questions, we've reached the end of the panel, but I think I sort of knew that in my heart, given the amazing group of panelists we had assembled up here to speak to you today, the 75 years of history we've hit that, and thank you, sir, for reminding me of something I didn't quite have key R for it, coming this fall on Fox TV, Gotham. <laughs> you, sir, the green shirt, and his panel is going to come up here. All right, my panelists, I thank you so much for probably one of the best hours I've ever spent working with DC Entertainment. I'd love to do it again. Thanks all of you for coming today. Thank you so much.